All right, it's Sunday afternoon. Usually on Saturday nights, me and the lady, we like to go out, enjoy a little rock and roll here in Vegas. We go to Count's Vamped. It's down Sahara, past Decatur. Anybody local knows about it, but it's really the only rock and roll club in town that's true rock and roll. We saw a great Scorpions tribute band. They were fantastic. Hung out with Danny the Count, Count uh, Coker from uh, Counting Cars, of course. Uh, he's a good friend, love him to death. So just wanted to throw that out there that that's where you go hang out for the rock and roll. A tradition here at the Mosley's has been for the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years, whatever. We have steak day on Sunday. It is Sunday. I got up at like 1.30. <laughs> it's 2.30 uh, as of this recording. This is a rock and roll, baby. And we're gonna wake up with a little protein. So this is what we usually do. Usually I get up a little earlier in this, but you know, we had a good time, let's just say. I need some Dr. Pepper to wake me up. All right, so. The key to making a great steak is a couple of different factors. Number one, you have to have a great steak. I personally, uh, you know, I sometimes I'll get my meat shipped in from Six Brothers Beef. These guys, uh, they mail in high-end uh, steaks. Um, but if you're just going to go local, I go to uh, Costco. And Costco usually has pretty decent cuts of prime. And the key is prime. You know, when you look at the uh, the marbling on this meat, I know it looks a little brown because I've been sitting here, but it's fine. But the marbling in this, I handpicked the steaks myself because I can tell what makes it good. And I have a really simple method um, for, for, for doing this. And, and you really don't have to have a flat griddle like we do. You can do this on a frying pan. Uh, you know, the, the finishing of the steak is all up to you. And, and I'll explain what I mean to that. All right. Well, what, let me get into it real quick. What I like to do is, first you gotta let the steak sit out for a few hours, a couple of two or three hours. You know, you want it to be room temperature. Then I like to put it in the oven. Now I've got my oven queued up and just let me know that it was hot and I've really got a little too hot. I'm gonna turn it down to uh, 250. Um, I like to bake my steak till it's about a, 120 degrees or so, something like that. Get it basically up to temperature. You don't want it to brown. You don't want it to start turning color. You just want it nice and warm, okay? Then you want to finish it. Now you can do that in a couple different ways. Uh, I've endorsed this uh, broiler that we usually use, which is out back, which is uh, basically it's a top broiler that you put the steak in and it burns about 1400 degrees and it'll sear the steak on each side. We like using that thing. We're not going to use that today. We're going to do it on the flat grill. My buddy, Chef Joey, he likes to do the pan fry method. You can use a skillet, just get it nice and hot and put a sear on both sides, but we can do that right here on this grill. All you want to do is just put a nice finishing uh, flavor on it, a little bit of char on each side. I don't personally like the flame grilled steaks. I feel like it dries them out. I do like the fire taste on there. But I don't like to do my steaks on like a Traeger or an egg or, a, or any fire system like that. That's really reserved for chicken and barbecue and other kinds of meats. And if you were here to try one of my steaks, I'm telling you, Chef Joey had one of my steaks last week and he told me that it was probably one of the best steaks he's ever had in his life. The steaks that I make, when I give them to people, they tell me over and over, they go, look, I've been to some of the greatest steak houses in the world. This is the best steak. So here it is, I'm just gonna show you my secret. It's really, I think it's about the preparation. I have this pink Himalayan salt. We're gonna put some of that on there. Now this is a powered grinder because I, I use a lot of this, so, you know. Now when you have a really good thick steak, you wanna try to stand it up on its side, if you can, and get some on that fat ridge there. Now you gotta remember, a lot of this salt is gonna burn off, all right? Then the pepper. I put a ton of black pepper on this thing. I should have put new batteries on this thing. It's my worst nightmare. It's gonna die while I'm trying to do the video. Because I use this thing a lot. And I'm gonna re-pepper it again. 
Yeah, it's running slow. I should have put new batteries in it. But getting it all along this ridge here, for a prime steak, you don't need anything else but salt and pepper. For crappy steaks, you know, the cheaper steaks, I recommend putting onion powder on it too. But this has enough fat in there to keep you happy. And the thing about it is, when you have a prime steak with proper marbling, what happens is all this fat liquefies and it cooks in its own, its own fat. All right, we're gonna, we'll probably put some batteries in that and then, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven so it starts warming up. Now the sides that we like to have with our steaks, uh, you know, you go to these fancy restaurants and they always do the same sides. It's like Chateau potatoes, cream spinach. Uh, they always try to do this, the same exact flavor pairing every time. And I'm just bored with it. I mean, we go to some really fancy restaurants, you know, we've gone to Gordon Ramsay, we go to Golden Steer, you know, we go to Del Frisco's, we've got every steakhouse. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. So this is what I like, okay? I like baked beans. I like Heinz beans imported from England. I literally get these imported from Britain uh, or you find a British shop in town that can get them. Everybody knows how I love the Heinz beans. My UK viewers are gonna be like, oh, like raw, of course, you know? So I have these every day pretty much. I buy cases of these, they're fantastic, okay? So we're gonna have some Heinz beans. Um, Rachel doesn't like the beans, so I just have a little bit myself, just a little bit of beans. Right, proper beans on toast. All right, and we always have peas. I like these sweet peas. You know, Bird's Eye, uh, this guy, Bird's Eye, invented frozen food. <laughs> it's a long story, look it up. And it started with the peas. But these peas right here, they're like a buck. At Walmart, they take like six minutes. And uh, we're gonna pop those in the microwave and get those going. Okay. One of my other super secrets, I gotta throw these guys a bone. Chef Chamois. I've been on the Chef Chamois kick for a little while now, several years. As far as I know, the only place you can get this is at Sam's Club, at certain Sam's Clubs. Used to be you could only get it at their like road show where they were there, you had to buy it from them when they were selling it. But now a lot of them carry it on a permanent basis. Sometimes in its own little um, freezer. This garlic butter, it's got a Parmesan cheese and basil. It's a life changer, this stuff right here. Anybody that I've let try some of this butter, and, and we're gonna use this a lot. We're gonna use this when we're grilling bread, when we're doing grilled cheese and sandwiches and all kinds of things. This garlic butter will change your life. Okay. Now, usually we do some kind of potatoes, usually the little tiny fingerling potatoes, creamer potatoes. Um, to, since we're using the grill, I'm gonna take these oven roaster potatoes. These are just cut wedges. We're gonna grill them. So we're gonna do that. Um, and we're gonna to get to the next part of what I think makes my steaks really special. All right, I was talking about the pairings, okay? You know, uh, I've talked about it before. One of my best friends was Vinnie Paul, uh, drummer for Pantera and Hell Yeah. And we did a lot of cookouts at his house, a lot. Um, and you know, one of my duties was sometimes to help him kind of be a sous chef, because he liked to cook, uh, help him cut up vegetables and to go out and grill the vegetables and fajitas. We used to do fajitas all the time. And what I discovered is like, you know, he would, he would cook up like, you know, 15 or 20 steaks and, and then chicken. Like he would cook for like 50 people at his house, right? And I would take steak and fajita mix and put it together and eat it that way. Like, is there anything better than steak fajita, right? And I discovered that when I'm doing my steaks, I like kind of a fajita mix. We have onions, different color bell peppers, mushrooms, and garlic. So rather than a spicy kind of a, a mix, we're going with garlic mix with the vegetables. And this is how I pair my steaks, right? And you, this is what I was talking about earlier is most of the time when you go to one of these fancy steak places, they always do this savory thing and they put like a twig of a, you know, tree on top of it and they have some kind of savory potatoes. 
this, the sweetness of these onions and bell peppers, right, add a whole other level to it. Another thing I've never really liked is I don't like sauteed mushrooms done with sherry wine. I don't like wine. I don't like fermented tasting things, right? I don't like beer or wine, actually. Um, and so I would always be annoyed that we would go to these steak places. You're paying 200 bucks for a steak, and then they would give you these little, these little button sauteed mushrooms. And then, you know, if you did get some onions, they would be like turned into sauerkraut by the time they gave them to you. So doing it this way, it's sort of a Southwest take on our steak. And I think you're gonna like it. I wanna get this turned up because we're gonna get fired up here in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and start with these potatoes and some avocado oil. This grill isn't quite hot enough yet, but I gotta get this going. Because these are gonna take a minute. It'll catch up. We sell these at Costco. You need to have yourself a big jar of garlic. Can't ever have enough of that. Okay, this Chef Chamois butter, I just pulled it out of the freezer because I, I didn't realize my Chef Chamois butter was in the freezer uh, where, where we keep it. We were running out. So, unfortunately, it's frozen, but it won't be frozen for long when I put these hot ass peas on top. You know, for certain stuff, you don't always have to have like fresh food. I mean, these frozen peas, they come out just fine. They taste just fine. And this is about quick and easy cooking, you understand? Because when it gets too involved, you're just not going to bother. It's just too much work. Especially, it's just the two of us, you know. We can only get so much done. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put these vegetables on because I need to get them going as well. Trying to get that caramelization on these vegetables. This stuff's about ready to come off, actually. But all that burn you see on the grill, that's what I want to see. That's, this stuff's turning to sugar and caramelizing. That's why they call it caramelization. The sugar turns into caramel. That's what gives it that sweet, sweet flavor. Wow. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. All right, this thing is sitting at um, 110 degrees. Wow, perfect. Okay, we don't want to clean the grill. We want to try to capture some of this amazing flavor. Here we go. I like to cover every square inch of it with pepper. Because you see it burns off. So you want to try to avoid flipping it as much as possible. But all that salt and pepper you put on a lot of it gets burned off. 
but I like to put a nice crunch on it, a pepper. And this kind of pepper isn't spicy. These are, I think they're called telecherry black peppers. And they're not very spicy. A little bit more salt. Another trick I like to do is I'll put it up on its side. Like that. Let me turn the grill back on for a minute. Here's the thing, me and my wife are gonna split this steak. Actually, we usually do it into thirds because we only eat like a little piece of this, right? Because you don't really need more than four or five ounces of steak. I, I don't care who you are. I mean, a piece about that big is what you should be eating, about like that, right? Eating these big giant colon killer steaks, it's just too much, right? So I'm gonna cut this into thirds. So usually when we invite like our buddy Chef Joey over, we do that into thirds. Now, see how that is P perfectly pink in the middle? See how that is? That's got a little hot, little cold spot there. And I think that's the one I'm going to save for later. We always save, we always make a dish for later. See, so batch cook, you got yourself a little steak dinner. Pop that in the microwave or the toaster oven, which is even better. Bang, you got yourself an awesome dinner. Real quick. I'm just gonna toss these over there in the vegetables to get them off the heat. All right, here we go, big finish. This is my steak plate. That's what I, I used to have giant steaks on here. I, you've noticed I'm much smaller than I used to be. It's because I've just really reduced my portions down by whatever I used to have. I have like maybe a third of that now. Honestly, this is a ton of food. I mean, this steak, these vegetables, the potatoes, the beans, the peas, that's a lot of food. I mean, your stomach's only this big. I won't eat all of this. This is too much. But here it is. I know what you want to see. You want to see inside this steak. And I left it on there just a second too long in my opinion. I like it to be a little pinker than that. But you know, it's messing around with the video. But I think that's pretty good. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's really, really good. This is the first time we ever did these potatoes. Mmm, those are really good. Okay. I'm ready to eat before this gets cold. That's our steak day. We used to do this live every week at the old house. People have been asking for it, here it is. That's how you make the Mosley. Just like Chef Joey used to sell up on the mountain, Mount Charleston. It's really about the pairing of the steak. And that's what makes it different. So try doing it this way. See how it turns out for you. I bet you'll like it. All right, let me know in the comments what other recipes you want me to try. I'm gonna do some other stuff that we used to do in a restaurant coming up. People are loving the cooking videos, so. This is really good, I wanna go eat. So I'll catch you guys later. Okay, a little bonus dessert. Can't recommend these enough. This is a sticky toffee pudding. I think I got these at Whole Foods. Used to find, um, used to find them at Trader Joe's. They used to sell these at Walmart. I don't even know. I think they're called the Sticky Toffee Pudding Company. Um, but it's a British style. You microwave it for like a minute and a half. And all you gotta do is it comes in this little cup, right? And if you've had 
uh, sticky toffee pudding, you know this is the best. This is my favorite dessert of all time. You just, I just dump the thing on a plate like that after it's nice and hot. And look at that. Comes out perfect every time. Let me demonstrate that again. It's hot. All right. Oh my God, that is so amazing. My favorite dessert, sticky toffee pudding. We always like to finish with this. And um, I don't know, I don't even know where, where to tell you to get it. If you're watching this and you happen to work for this company or you know who these are, send me some. <laughs> tell me where I can get a case of this. I want lots of it. Anyway, wonderful stuff, free endorsement. That's my uh, extra dessert bonus. So I'm gonna go eat. <laughs>